Ain't nobody got time for an intro, let's get right into the early wipe tips. Focusing on survival is more important than looting half the map in one raid to min-max your gains for quests. Fighting players during the early wipe is literally a waste of time. 99% of them, they will throw their Salewas and flash drives or any keys that would be of value into their prison pocket. Getting into a fight with them will inevitably lead into you getting third partied by other PMCs or scout players and even if you end up being the winner in that situation, there is a high chance that you will not get anything too valuable off of them anyway. And there is no way for you to carry most of the loot out due to small bags and reeks and not to mention the weight which would slow you down and lead to you having to take a breather after every 4 steps. The guns and armor on them are usually the most basic stuff so you don't need them anyway. Obviously they will have loot that you need but nothing that you cannot go and loot for yourself in the 20 or 30 minutes that you spend in that raid. I personally just avoid the PvP like the plague in the first half of the wipe or until I get max traders unless I have a quest which specifically requires me to kill PMCs and if I'm not mistaken the first quest that would require you to kill anyone comes from Skier once you hit level 9. Obviously if you are in a situation where you have to fight them and leaving is just not a viable option go for it. Take them out but I would not stick around to loot because by the time you're finished patching yourself up and finishing looting their bodies there's a high chance that a third party already has eyes on that area. Also having a plan before you are even deployed into the raid will make your life 10 times easier. If you have a goal of fighting some nuts and bolts or maybe getting the 3M armor and toss for skier, instead of just winging it and going into the raid and seeing whatever happens, plan out a rough route in your head of which areas you want to hit. And I say rough because you never really know where you spawn. But having that goal in every single raid will make it a lot easier for you to just leave once you got your hands on whatever item you are looking for. Also, if you're not too familiar with the maps, mapgenie.io is a great tool for for learning them. I will throw the link into the description if you want to take a look at it. Open it on the second monitor or just open it on your phone. Having that on the side will save you a lot of brain cells trying to figure out where you are and where you are supposed to go. I used to just alt tap myself constantly when I just had a single monitor set up. If that's what you plan on doing, make sure to switch your game to borderless to avoid getting the annoying black screens for a few moments every single time you alt tap. It might just save your life. But getting back to the planning your routes, also try to avoid like really high traffic areas as well. The construction site on customs for example is gonna be very common area where people are looking for their pocket watch or just to kill scavs every single location of woods with possible med spawns will be extremely busy so only add those areas into your so-called route if you need to go there for a specific quest otherwise just stay away but before we move on just remember to have fun if you feel like having a few raids where you just go out and cause some havoc around the place just go for it the most important thing obviously is to just enjoy the game and keep your sanity while playing it and if any of my tips get in the way of you having a good time just ignore it and do your thing fear of missing out is a dangerous thing it is something that i have to be reminded of every single wipe at some point we all get too greedy and end up paying the price for it and losing our one saliva or flash drive once you find something of use it is okay to just leave the raid it is not required for you to have a full bag of loot every single time you reach the extract take your one saliva or flash drive or just a toss if that is what you need for skier and make your way out of the raid obviously you can loot a couple of stashes and whatever else is on the way to the extract but if your main goal is progress then Leaving after you find something of value should be your priority. Only thing you would have to look out for is that you do not get a run through. You have to spend at least 7 minutes in raid or earn at least 200 XP, which does not include the extraction experience. So if you kill one scab with a headshot or check his body, you are generally free to just leave without having to worry about getting a run through, especially if you have been looting beforehand already. If you do not know exactly which items you need, I will throw the link to this image into the description. This shows all the items you need to get your hands on to complete the upcoming tasks. They are in order that you need to find them for every single trader. Also, if there are new tasks added or some stuff might change, there will be minor changes done to the image. But most quest items are always the same, so there won't be a very big difference. You do not have to memorize every single item, but just take a peek every now and then. Take a mental note. The items highlighted in green are the items that have to be found in raid. The items which are not highlighted can be purchased from the flea market, or if you die with them in your secure container, you can still use them for the given quest later. Your hideout is extremely important. One of those things a lot of players do not consider is how many things can be crafted for quests in there. Every single item you craft is considered found in raid, which means you can craft your was in there, your 15 Dushankas for therapist, and so many other things. Every wipe, I usually end up crafting one or two Salewas in my med station, but not only that, there's a pretty big variety of meta ammunition that you can end up crafting before you unlock them from the traders. 
granted they are usually about 10 to 15 hour crafts but you would start those crafts at the end of the day when you are done playing while you are playing you can do 30 minute or one to two hour crafts every single time you craft something you gain experience for your crafting skill which speeds up your crafting time as well including your bitcoin farms and boost generators and all that stuff as well crafting also increases your hideout management skill which increases your bonuses from the hideout and also decreases the fuel air and water filters consumption rate Crafting can also be extremely profitable. I personally craft cheaper things to sell them for euros on the flea market as I need 70,000 euros later in the wipe. And since I start really early, I can usually scoop up around 40 to 50,000 just by crafting bandages and other smaller items to sell on the flea market. I cannot give you any specific items to craft for profit since it changes pretty constantly during the early wipe. And obviously, honestly, I don't even remember them off the top of my head. But if you take 5 to 10 minutes to just look around, you can certainly find a couple of things that can land you a nice little profit on every single craft. The one thing I always try and rush as fast as possible is the library. It grants you additional 15% experience gain from your raids and 30% boost for your practical skills, such as crafting and hideout management, for example, but there are many more. Air filter is another one which gives you around, like gives you exactly 40% boost on leveling your physical skills, such as endurance and strength. I could go on for a while, but I'm sure you get the picture by now. If you get ahead of the majority of the player base and get access to some of these crafts that people do not have, you can make a ton of profit by just clicking a couple of buttons every few hours and even if you do not care for the profit it helps you with leveling and getting through some of the quests a lot easier speaking of profit make sure to sell the flea market as often as possible to increase your flea reputation which will allow you to sell more things at once later on obviously you do need money spent with traders at some point which means you will have to sell to them but keep in mind that if you buy things from traders it also counts as money spent that includes the barters and some traders have some very expensive barters for things that you would need down the line anyway for example if you look at jaeger there aren't many things you would generally buy from him but the thermal bag barter could be good to keep food on you dog tag case barter is another one for storing dog tags obviously and and so on you get the idea also you do get a bigger profit margin from the flea market than traders of course it is better to sell something on flea market for a hundred thousand rubles and then use that money on traders to buy guns and armor and all that stuff rather than to sell the same item for twenty five thousand to therapist or whatever another pro tip is to try and get your intel center to level three this isn't really early wipe tip obviously but still good to know once you build intel center level three in your hideout your flea market commission is reduced by 30 percent just a good tip to know another important thing is managing your stash now this is extremely annoying especially for the standard account players but even as a eod owner myself i sometimes struggle with hoarding items early wipe since there is a lot of things that i just want to get my hands on and there's always something i need later down the line that i just don't want to get rid of that's why your first big purchase should always be the lucky scav junk box from therapist level one takes 16 slots of space but gives 196 in return so it is massive and you can throw every single barter item in there nuts bolts lettuces motors you name it majority of the things that you can find in raid it can store it is 1.1 million which is a very big price tag but 90 percent of the containers in tarkov are worth it especially if you are on the standard account with the smallest stash base but having to buy two of them early wipe is quite common for me since i like to hoard as many items as possible especially since daily and weekly tasks require the most random items you can think of it is good to have those things ready to hand over i do think the majority of us can get by with just buying one of them though also a lot of rigs and bags take less space than they give if you right click and inspect a rig or a bag you can see how many slots they have there are a good few out there that can give you an extra three to four slots which may not sound like a lot but it really adds up especially during the early wipe also try not to sell the containers you get from traders as a quest reward i know it is super tempting to sell the ammunition boxes and the med cases on the flea market for a huge stack of money but i think it's better off to keep them on you as making money in tarkov is quite simple but trying later on to buy these cases back can be a bit of a challenge since they tend to sell out pretty fast on every single trader reset if you really need some money check out the playlist tab on my channel there is a whole playlist just dedicated for money runs i also have a separate video on how to get all the containers in escape from tarkov go take a peek if you are interested in that i will make a separate video on how to level up fast in tarkov but here are some of the key points first of all keep your eye on the hideout we all start with the defective wall and while we gather stuff to upgrade that part of our hideout we get some negative traits from it one of which is minus three percent experience loss from our raids nothing massive but another thing that just adds up so to get rid of that you have to mop the floor inside of the 
effective wall, I guess, with uh, one fleece fabric. So keep your eye on that. Do not lose all of your uh, precious experience. Moving on, you really have to focus on survival. The experience you gain in raid is increased by 30% if you manage to survive. That's why survival is so important. The more you survive, the more of that bonus you will accumulate. Obviously, besides just getting the items out. If possible, kill scavs with headshots and always click search on their body for extra 100-ish experience. That includes uh, players as well. You do not have to fully loot them. Just go onto their body press search and the experience gained will be shown on the bottom right of your screen and if you wish you can just move on you don't have to actually search the body you just have to click on it also try to combine your daily and weekly tasks with your main quests if you have a few quests on customs for example and you get a daily to survive on customs three times or kill 10 scavs on customs that is perfect but if instead you get a daily which requires you to go to lighthouse to kill scavs just skip that it's just not worth your time to go and do that little task for like three or four thousand experience you're just better off working on your main quest as the experience gained will gradually get higher and higher if you can combine it with your daily or weekly that is perfect but it is not worth going out of your way for them. The only exception to that rule would be if the reward is something extremely valuable. If you get a hard to obtain quest item, for example, or a lapse key card or something crazy like that. I personally always look out for the tank battery in my daily and weekly quests, as that is one of the most annoying items to obtain in SK from Tarkov, in my opinion. And even if you do find one in raid, you are so heavy that it will take you around three business days to reach the extract anyway. But I think that about just sums it up, my friends. Just remember to have some fun and enjoy the game i really hope you found something valuable in this video if you did maybe consider subscribing and turning on some of them notifications and i hope you have a great wipe my friends take care